I know it's been a while. We, I, it's been several weeks since I did my last video. I, as many of you know, I'm in the United States. I've been here for, uh, well, since the middle of January, and I, I do plan to return and uh, and sometime in the next uh, 30 days. I'm not going to say exactly when I'm going to return, just for uh, personal reasons. Uh, I've got some people that are. Uh, I, I just don't want them to know, you know, uh, when I'm coming back, exactly when I'm coming back. But I've got a few, quite a few things that I want to talk about, and I thought I would just, I don't know if this is kind of like a TAT, or if I just want to turn it into a lecture series or what. But anyway, I just want to share some thoughts with you, and I'll get started on it right after this. Hey! Oh, rock a cheek. Hello there. I've been here in Mesa at my former residence and where I lived before I moved. And, you know, one of the things that a lot of people have asked me is like, you know, what has it been like for you as far as the differences between, you know, living, being in the States and living in Ecuador? And I do have to say, I mean, it, it goes without saying that there's uh, major differences. And of course, you know, the utmost, the most, the thing that has the most profound impact on me has been the peace and quiet that I... Uh, get to enjoy here uh, where I'm at. I'm on a golf course and the noisiest thing I have to hear are, are the birds chirping, you know. But fortunately for me, this place that I'm in has these double pane windows and doors and when I close the doors, well here's a little sample here. This is the way uh, double pane windows work. You can hear the birds chirping out there. Completely gone. When I close the doors, as you heard, the, the sound just goes away. But let's face reality here. I live in a city in Ecuador. I live in a city and it's noisy. All cities are noisy. So a lot of people joke with me and make fun of me because of the, me uh, bitching about noise. And it's really kind of become kind of a, of a thing for me, you know, because I, I, now I, I joke about it. In Monta, I've actually become quite accustomed to it. I don't know if I'll ever get used to it, but it's there. It is what it is. And it comes with the package. So if you're going to live in a city like Monta or Salinas or any of these coastal cities, you're going to deal with noise. Car alarms, horns honking, dogs barking, uh, the ocean waves, you know, building alarms going off, people standing outside talking, and of course loud music. You're going, it, all, it comes with the package. On to another topic now, talking about the differences between my life in Ecuador and what it's been like here. I do have to say, in spite of what all the naysayers have been telling me about how bad things are in the United States, I just wish you people would just shut the hell up. Because I think it's all, it's, it's what you make of it, I believe. I honestly believe that. I don't see what's so bad about the United States. There are problems, I know it, I admit it, okay, and we all know about it. There are problems. There's problems with the government, there's problems with the cost of living, which is, that's the main thing for me. The biggest impact for me has been the cost of living. I've spent double the amount of money for groceries here in the time that I've been here than I ever have spent in Ecuador. 
you know, gasoline here is three eighty nine a gallon now. Ecuador is two forty, I believe. You know, food, everything's ex I, every, everything at the grocery store is five bucks and up. You know, so it's like, you know, it's it's expensive to be here. There's no question about it. It's expensive, and you just have to be prepared for it. But I still think it's a great country. Yeah, I love, we have so many things here in the United States that you don't get in Ecuador. Oh, here's a good example. Here's one for you. Check this out. Skinny Pop. <laughs> Skinny Pop popcorn. I bought this at Costco. It costs $6.99. This is by far the best popcorn I've ever eaten in my life. And I can't hardly live my life without it. If I ever have a reason for coming back to the United States, it's going to be so I can get this stuff. It's only 150 calories for uh, a three and a half, three and three quarter cups serving size, 150 calories. All right, organic, non-GMO, gluten-free, dairy-free, peanut-free, tree nut-free, preservative-free, Republican-free. <laughs> no artificial flavor is a good source of fiber and delicious. Skinny Pop Popcorn. I should have said this video is brought to you by Skinny Pop Popcorn. But that's just an example. You're not going to find that in Ecuador. You know, I don't even think we can find anything in close except my homemade popcorn. The other problem that I see here is the, the impact of high pricing on the senior citizens. There are seniors here living in the streets. There are seniors here they had to make a choice almost on a daily basis on whether they're going to eat or pay their electric bill. And these are seniors that were doing just fine three years ago. The government here is going to have to get their shit together and do something about this economy. You know, I don't have all the answers, but I, the first thought that comes to my mind is, you know, get some kind of regulation on corporate greed. Because I still think and I still say that corporate profits and corporate greed is what's driving inflation and the cost. It's, it is now a luxury item to go to McDonald's to eat or Church's Fried Chicken or Dairy Queen. I wish we had Dairy Queen in Ecuador. I've had three hot pot Sundays since I've been here. Okay, so moving on. Uh, I want to share, there was a solid story on Facebook um, a couple weeks ago about a guy who shared his story, his insurance story, where he had private insurance, he had a medical emergency, he had to go to the hospital. He basically was held captive at the hospital until he could pay the bill. And then he was gonna to have to go file uh, a claim with his private insurance. Folks, that's the reality of buying insurance in Ecuador. A lot of the private insurance aid companies require you you know, to put the bill first. I had to do that for my foot surgery. They still didn't cover it all, but that was there was another reason for that that I don't need to talk about here. Insurance in Ecuador is not the same as insurance in the United States of America or Canada. I, I you know, as you know, I don't like to give advice, but I will make some recommendations once in a while. And I can speak for you single people that go there by yourself like me, when you buy insurance, it might behoove you to go ahead and sign up for IESS and then get you an additional private policy on top of it. That way, if you have an emergency, most cases IESS will take care of it for you and then they can send you to your private carrier or provider and help you out, okay? Uh, I definitely recommend that you talk to Carlos over at Blue Box Insurance. He's in every major city in Ecuador, and he's actually at the one, the Blue Box Agency in Monta, but he is a good English-speaking guy, super nice guy, and just give him a call and talk to him about your insurance needs, and don't forget, pre-existing conditions here is a big thing, okay? I have high blood pressure, and I can't be treated for anything, I can be treated, but I can, won't be covered for anything that's related to high blood pressure for 24 months. 
after signing my original policy. There's another story that I want to share that I actually just got today. I'm not going to mention this person's name, but I'm going to read some of the stuff that, that uh, this person wrote to me on Messenger. And I have it on my computer and I had to read it from here. Um, I thought this was pretty interesting and I want to share it with you, okay? It's not, not real long, so hang, hang in there with me, okay? Hey Don, I'm leaving the coast tomorrow, heading to Cuenca. The coast is not for me. I lived in Ayampi and Puerto Lopez for five weeks. Hope you're doing well. I went to the mall in Monsa once. When are you coming back? So I wrote back to her and said, I'm returning in a few weeks. I know what you mean. The coast isn't for everyone. You will most likely love Cuenca as long as you can handle the altitude. It's a beautiful city and it's a completely different world compared to the coastal region. Be sure to visit the Sunrise Cafe as well as San Fran Cafe. They're both very good and very reasonably priced. I wish you the best of luck and please keep in touch. So she wrote back and said, thanks for the restaurant referral. I'm sorry. Well, crap. Hold on. I'll just jump from one conversation to another. Using a trackpad instead of my mouth. Uh, sorry. Thanks for the restaurant referral. I'm sorry I never got to meet you in person. Well, <laughs> I know that feeling. Uh, I've dealt with roaches, scorpions, my cat eating geckos, centipedes, etc. Plus some strange people and no, and way too much heat, humidity, and bug bites, mosquitoes. In five weeks, I've never had my own washer and dryer, which is a major pain. No good air conditioning in this house. It's only a, in one small room. Last Airbnb, it helped cool the downstairs, but not the bedroom. I really thought I'd love the coast, but I hate it. Monta and Salinas don't appeal to me. I get nervous about the lack of health care here on the coast. I have a feeling I will love Cuenca as long as I can breathe. And by the way, speaking to the person that wrote this, in case you watch this video, I told you that I wouldn't recommend Salinas to anybody. And then you came back and said, well, I didn't stay in Salinas, but now you see where I got that from. You mentioned in this paragraph here, uh, Salinas, and that's why I thought you had lived there. So, uh, again, I apologize for that, but uh, for some reason you said Monty and Salinas don't appeal to you. I took it that you were in Salinas. Uh, but anyway, I get nervous about the lack of health care here on the coast. I have a feeling I will love Cuenca as long as I can breathe. Good things about my last five weeks, I've learned things about myself, and at age 60, I'm learning to not trust People right away have been taken advantage of here. And I've created a list of things I took for granted in North Carolina and the U.S. in general. So if I so if I go back, it will be with so much gratitude. So I went on. I said, I'm going to do a video today about... Uh, anyway, I, I want to go... I'm, not, I'm going to skip what I wrote. Well, no, I'm going to go ahead and tell you what I told her. I'm going to do a video today, a general lecture, so to speak, and I'm going to share your story. No, I won't mention your name, and I haven't. I hardly ever do this, but today I'm making an exception. I'm going out on a limb here and telling you that I guarantee you that you will probably love Cuenca. The breathing issue is easy to deal with. Just give it time. Don't rush into anything, especially the first week you're there, and meet a good doctor and ask for treatment. You will be okay. Okay? And then I, I went on to say, if it doesn't work out for you, I will say I am sorry and I've, I'll be really surprised. I know of only a, one couple that left the coast for Cuenca but ended up going back to the States. That's all. Bad expats are everywhere, especially the ones that came here with higher than reasonable expectations. You will quickly learn to recognize them and know to stay away. Learn some Spanish and meet locals. Some of the best friends I can meet you can meet our local Ecuadorians. Good luck. So then she wrote back and said, Thanks, Tom, but one of my worst experiences was with a local, okay, from Salango. He only wanted me for the money I could provide. I, of course, played a part and naively believed he really cared for me as a friend. But after I told him I would not lend him $5,000, he basically disappeared. The expats I've met here are a mixed bag. Not many I would be friends with back in the States. 
Lots of dysfunctional people and alcoholics. Really? Yeah. I agree with you on that one. Not to say I'm perfect, far from it. So, you know, I've had people ask me for money, and uh, I had one that asked me to pay you some bill for him, and he would send it to me later, and I told him, I had, I'm sorry, man, I, I'm tapped out because I've already helped too many people this month, and I haven't heard back from him since then. I have a friend, an expat friend, that I stopped by to visit once there in Ecuador here a few months ago, and he looked like he'd lost about 50 pounds. And I asked him, I said, you know, what's going on with you? And he said he's basically starving. He had no money, no job, no money coming in. He has small business, but he had nothing in his refrigerator or his freezer. I gave him some money, and the guy wept. And I don't blame him. It's a very emotional thing to have to tell somebody that you're broke and you're hungry. We, we come to this country with a lot of pride. But, you know, even well-to-do expats, as well as not-so-well-to-do expats, can fall on hard times. And so we all, sometimes we kind of have to look out for each other. And that's what I did with this guy. I helped him out. I paid his electric bill for a couple months so he wouldn't lose his power. Me and a friend went to the grocery store and bought him a trunk load of groceries one time. And now he's doing much better and he's been getting some work and, you know, he's on the road to recovery. So, but, you know, folks, you're going to meet some really excellent locals when you come to Ecuador. And, yeah, there are going to be there those that want to take advantage of you, you know, and want to borrow money from you. And I... I have to say, use your own gut feelings, your own intuition, and do what you think is right. But please be careful. I, I wouldn't get into the business of loaning money out to to locals. You know, they're, uh, it, you just, you know, you're in a different world. So that's my recommendation. So, but I think that's really about the end of the conversation with her. And I, I didn't want to, bring up, you know, too much. I'm going to, uh, looking to see if there's something else I wanted to trust from her story. And no, I don't. That's it. I want to do a little short update on the state of emergency. I have no update uh, other than I haven't heard anything any worse than the way it was when I left and came here. I know there have been some shootings, but you know what, folks, there were shootings before the state of emergency. I think if you look at my last update I did, I think that pretty well sums it up. They've arrested lots of gang members. They've taken control of the prisons. And now No Boy is doing some things that's kind of taken some people off. I've heard stories that he wants to tax all of our incomes. And, you know, I'm not worried about that because I don't make enough to, to have to worry about it. Uh, but, you know, I say let's just wait and see what happens. I mean, the guy uh, is doing the best he can, and uh, as far as the state of emergency, I'm not going to. I'm not worried about it. You know, if you want to stay away from the shootings and things, stay away from drugs. Okay, and you you won't be involved in these targeted hits. So the other thing that I made a note on here is what do I have to look forward to when I return. And what will I miss from being here? As far as, you know, looking forward to coming back, um, I will get to see my girlfriend. You know, I miss her so very much. And we've had some phone conversations, and I think the stress of being apart from each other is taking its toll on me. And I end up taking it out on her by just being a bitch and not being very nice, and she knows that I'm not, I don't mean it, and I'm sorry, and, you know, I still uh, love her very much. And I miss her every waking moment that I'm awake. I miss, you know, my friends. I've got some great friends there in Monta. And believe it or not, I just, you know, I just kind of, it's, it's different there than it is here. 
and I just kind of miss the overall experience. I miss having my car and driving my car. <laughs> I thought I'd never say that. But yeah, I miss, miss driving my car. What will I miss in the U.S.? I, I have to say, I mean, this, I could go on and on and on about that. The infrastructure, uh, food choices, the quality of things to buy and spend money on, you know. Um, excuse me. I don't miss the coffee because the coffee here really sucks compared to Ecuador. That's one thing I'm looking forward to is getting uh, back to Ecuadorian coffee and chocolate. But there are a lot of things I'm going to miss here and uh, let's face it, we're two different worlds. And I could go on and on and on about what I'm going to miss. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to uh, lie to all of you and say that I plan to spend the rest of my life in Ecuador. I ultimately would like to come back here. But there's a lot of things that are going to have to get fixed first, and we all know that. And you're right. Right now, the cost of living is the, the biggest problem for me in the United States. It's not like it was three years ago, for sure. My biggest regret about this whole move to Ecuador my biggest regret was selling my condo here. I should not have done it because now, as it is, even with my modest income, I can't afford to spend half my income on a mortgage. And if I had just kept my condo and rented it out, I, I would have a place to come to if I wanted to come back here. You know, but as it is now, I can't do it. So that's it. That's all I got. I don't have any more. Let me check my notes here. I've, I'm done. I'm sorry that it's been a while since I've been in touch, but as soon as I get back, I'm going to do some more interviews. I have a couple of interviews that I'm going to do here. I'm going to do one with Nicholas Crowder, who is a author and wrote some books about Ecuador. I've met him for lunch, and we're going to get together hopefully next week, and I'm going to do an interview with him. And I'm going to share that with you, okay? And a lot of he wrote this book about ten years ago. I've read it now, and I'm going to compare notes and with him, and compare then to now, and now to then. Okay, that's it. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite me. And I say that with peace and love. See you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.